In Brockton, we swing for the fences so we can touch home. We coach in Brockton to instill the teamwork that builds a great winning tradition. We do business in Brockton because here you can find a taste of home away from home. We keep our company in Brockton because we love this city. When Brockton is home, everything is within reach. Good afternoon, everyone, and we appreciate you joining us here uh, this afternoon. Picked a great afternoon for an announcement. Uh, just before I introduce Senator Markey, we do want to recognize uh, many elected officials that we have here in attendance. Uh, Senator Mike Brady, who we'll hear from in a couple moments. State Representative Jerry Cassidy is with us here today. Uh, Ward 6 City Councilor Jack Lally is present today. From the Southeastern Regional School Committee, Mark Lindy is here with us today. And uh, the president of uh, Firefighters Local 144, Bill Hill, is here with us today. So we appreciate everyone uh, joining us uh, for the Senator's visit. Um, we uh, truly do appreciate the Senator taking the time to come to Brockton today. He's been a regular visitor to the city uh, just back in April. Uh, the Senator held a town hall meeting at the War Memorial that was uh, a great event and uh, just three months later we have the privilege of having him back here again. Um, shortly after I was first elected in 2014, about a month later in February of 2014, uh, at that time Senator Markey uh, held a summit in Taunton in response to the uh, emerging opioid overdose crisis. And he brought uh, President Obama's drug czar with him, Gil Kerlikowski, and um, Senator Markey really stooped, stood to the forefront that day and took a leadership role in helping all of the communities in Massachusetts respond to the overdose crisis. And uh, we had an opportunity to really sit down and speak at length the first time then, and I've got to tell you that since then, uh, Brockton has really enjoyed a great working relationship with Senator Markey and uh, it's my privilege to welcome him back to the city again today. Senator? Wow. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, thank you for being uh, a great champion. Thank you for being a great champion in this great city of champions, and uh, we do go back to that uh, first meeting in Taunton uh, in February of uh, 2014. And uh, what you've done in uh, Brockton is to create a model uh, for how people who are suffering as part of this opioid crisis to be able to deal with it. And, uh, and I learned about the opioid crisis not from the medical community, not from the, uh, not from the pharmaceutical industry, but I learned about it from the fire departments. I learned about it from the first responder community. They are the ones who were talking about this epidemic long before the medical community did because they were there every single day responding to this then heroin, now fentanyl epidemic uh, across our whole country. Uh, but I had the first summit here with Gil Kurlikowski, uh who was the drug czar for the nation at that time uh, over in Taunton. The mayor came, uh, the mayor acted, the mayor implemented uh, strategies which are models, not just for our state, but for the whole rest of the country on these issues. And a lot of it is just done in conjunction with, in partnership with the fire department. Here. Because that's where you learn, you know, from the police and the fire uh, here in um, Brockton, but across the entire country. So I want to thank um, Chief uh, Michael Williams. Thank you for all of your great leadership. 
Uh, I'm here with uh, my great friend, uh, State Senator Michael uh, Brady, uh, with uh, uh, your great state representative, uh, Jerry Cassidy. Uh, I know Jack Lally is here, Mark Lindy is here. Uh, we want to thank you all for your service to uh, our region uh, and to this great city. Now, across the Commonwealth, our firefighters put their lives on the line every single day as they bravely respond to emergency calls. And nowhere is that more true than right here in Brockton. The Brockton Fire Department works tirelessly serving their community. In 2016, one year, they responded to more than 25,000 incidents. That makes them one of the busiest fire departments in the entire United States and the number one busiest fire department in all of Massachusetts on a per capita basis. Roughly 1,000 of those incident responses involve firefighters having to charge into enclosed buildings full of dangerous and blinding smoke. The risk of smoke inhalation makes a perilous job even more dangerous. Our firefighters are heroes, but sometimes heroes need help. And that is why this new funding from FEMA is so important. Working in partnership with the city, with the mayor, with his great team, we have been able to secure a $578,000 FEMA assistance to firefighters grants. This funding will go towards self-contained breathing apparatus units uh, and a fill station. So this was hard fought down in Washington, but Brockton made the case, the city made the case, the mayor made the case, and we're here today celebrating. Uh, and uh, I partnered um, down in Washington with Congressman Lynch, uh, and his great staff to ensure uh, that uh, we would be successful along with Senator Elizabeth Warren. That's all part of the teamwork you need in order to win at a national level. And that's what Brockton is announcing here today. Because we all agree that the Brockton Fire Department deserves the tools they need to continue saving and succeeding. These new funds are going to allow the department, again, to purchase self-contained breathing apparatus and a new air filling station for those units so that the firefighters putting themselves directly in harm's way will have a safe and reliable source of air to breathe. These additional protections will make one of the most efficient fire departments in the nation even more efficient, and importantly, they will make these firefighters safer in the line of duty. So we thank the fire um, department for everything they do every single day. Uh, our job is to just help you do your job even better. That is why this $578,000 uh, grant is coming your way, because your record has proven that you deserve it, that you're the best. And I'm proud to be here today uh, with the chief and with the mayor and all the rest of the elected officials to announce this uh, phenomenal success. So congratulations, Mr. Mayor. Thank you so much, Senator. And uh, as much as I always look forward to seeing you, I do like it a little bit better when you bring good news and a big check. So it's, it's really nice to have you here today. Um, at this time, I'd like to uh, bring up uh, our fire chief, Mike Williams, uh, so that he can share with us in a little bit more detail uh, the importance and, and uh, the use of this equipment that we'll now be able to purchase with this uh, grant award of over half a million dollars. Chief. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Senator Markey, for being here today. Also for all your hard work, as you mentioned, in Washington. Also like to extend my thanks to Congressman Lynch and Senator Warren for their hard work as the, as the senator mentioned. And again, thank you to Mayor Carpenter. As you mentioned, uh, I know on several of his visits to Washington, he was uh, advocating for this grant. 
so thank you to him. Um, thank you all for joining us here today. Um, it's a very exciting day for the Brockton Fire Department. As the, as the Senator spoke on, um, this is very important equipment for our department. Uh, it protects our firefighters, allows us to go um, into places where normally we couldn't. Um, the grant of $578,000 will be purchasing a new air filling station, a new air compressor, 90 self-contained breathing apparatus units, 180 air cylinders for those units, and 177 face pieces. Um, so again, uh, on behalf of the Brockton Fire Department, I'd like to thank everyone involved, and uh, thank you for coming today. Thank you, Chief. We'd also uh, like to introduce uh, State Senator Mike Brady for a few comments. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, speaking of that breathing apparatus, before I became a state senator, I was the vice chairman of public safety in the House of Representatives, and I saw firsthand the training facility up in Stowe. And going through the training that these firefighters did, and it was a small, minuscule piece of what they did in their training, and I know they do a great job training in Brockton, but I could have used that breathing apparatus going through the training <laughs> that they did up there. Uh, it was just incredible. And I. Brockton Fire Department is one of the best in the nation, if not the best in Squad A on Pleasant Street, which is right up the street from where I grew up and still live in the neighborhood, had the highest number of calls in the country, never mind just in the Commonwealth, in the country time and time again. And we are recognizing the Commonwealth as the best fire department in the Commonwealth. And I want to thank all our public safety personnel. We just came from a tough day, a funeral in Hanawa for a police officer that uh, unfortunately had been murdered and uh, we're dealing with the opiate addiction crisis because I found out through some things that he was released from another facility and should have never been released. But we've got to go after these health insurance companies to make sure they protect our residents because with health insurance coverage and everything else, it never would have got to the situation it did. But in Massachusetts, unlike the rest of the country, we work together. And, and I hate to use the analogy like the Patriots with Tom Brady, I'm certainly no relation is in much better shape than I am, but we work together from our federal delegation with Senator Markey, Senator Warren, Congressman Lynch, to our local state delegation. I know Representative Cassidy is here, Representative Cronin is uh, on a conference committee because we're finding out, we finalized the budget this week, but we also have some important piece of legislation we have to get done by the end of this month. She wishes she could be here, but she's another leader in the uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts and also Representative Dubois, and we have a great team at the state level, but you know, we also work with our local officials, and we have a great working relationship with our mayor, Bill Carpenter, our city council, I know Council Lally is here, and the rest of the council, and our local school committee officials. So without working together, none of this would be possible, but it starts with the leadership at the congressional level, and our U.S. Senator Ed Markey, I want to thank you from the bottom of our heart, because these grants are so important, in a city like Brockton, it doesn't have the resources like some of the wealthy communities. It's even more important that we are delivering this goods to the city of Brockton. So thank you, Senator. Thank you. We appreciate all your work. You've been a great advocate on behalf of our community, a great friend for us in Brockton. So God bless you. Well, I, I do appreciate uh, the, the comments uh, from both the, the Senator and the Chief uh, referencing the team approach uh, that was successful with this grant application. And I would be remiss if I didn't uh, mention uh, Deputy, Deputy Fire Chief Albanese, uh, who was the point person in this effort, uh, and uh, also on that team with the Deputy Chief Paul Yamano, our citywide grants coordinator, uh, and others that contributed. But uh, Deputy Chief Albanese did an outstanding job uh, leading this effort. And uh, we appreciate their efforts and, and their willingness to all work together. Uh, we, we do have the opportunity to get down and meet with Senator Markey three or four times a year. And I think when you see an announcement like today, that's, that's the fruits of some of that labor. And uh, the Senator is always great when, we're, when we do go down to meet. He makes all his staff, all his resources available to us. And whatever items that we're down there uh, looking for assistance with, the Senator always immediately uh, assigns resources and help, and he'll make that phone call and write that letter for us uh, when we really need it. Uh, just a few months ago, we received uh, 
over $3 million in funding from HUD for lead paint abatement here in the city. That was another grant program that we've been chasing hard for a while, and with the Senator's help, we were able to obtain that and, and to have the Senator back here today with an award of over half a million dollars for our fire department is, uh, is critical for the city. And uh, I, I, I truly do appreciate what this equipment means to our firefighters and, and our fire department. And, uh, you know, on a day that we are uh, laying a police officer to rest who lost his life in the line of duty, I think if there's one thing we can all agree upon is that uh, when we send our firefighters into these life-threatening situations on a daily basis, that we have to give them the best equipment available. And that's what this uh, money coming from Washington today will allow us to do. So, Senator, we are eternally grateful for your help in this effort. Hi, I'm Brockton Mayor Bill Carpenter. Baseball season has arrived and that means pothole season is with us now too. We're asking you for your help in reporting potholes to the city of Brockton using one of two easy to use methods. The mayor's pothole hotline is now open at 508-897-1306. 508-897-1306, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Just call and leave us a voicemail with the exact location of the pothole, including a street address, to allow us to get our DPW crews out to make the repairs to the road as soon as possible. Or you can use our See Click Fix app to report potholes to the City of Brockton 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The See Click Fix app is a free download to most Android and iPhone devices. You can also locate the See Click Fix app on our city website at brockton.ma.us. Just tell us where the problem is, select pothole as the category. You can even upload a photo if you'd like. The Mayor's Pothole Hotline or the See Click Fix app. Two convenient ways to let us know exactly where those potholes are. We will get our DPW highway crews out to fix them as soon as possible. The Office of Mayor Bill Carpenter has announced a variety of new ways residents can submit tips anonymously and communicate with neighbors via telephone, internet, texting, and apps that are available on your cell phone. If you want to contact the Brockton Police Department anonymously, you can do so directly by calling them anytime at their tip line, 508-941-0244. You can also send a text to CRIMES or 274 637. Text Brockton at the beginning of the text, followed by the violation you see that you want to report. These features are available to anyone with access to a phone, cell phone, or computer with internet access, and all of this information can be found on the Brockton Police Department's official website at brocktonpolice.com. Outside of directly contacting the Brockton PD via call, text, or online message, there are a few new apps you can download to your smart and iPhones to report crimes and violations you see anonymously. My PD is an app you can download to your phone where you can submit a tip, ask the Brockton police a question, or even commend an officer for doing a good job. You just click on what you want to do and fill out the forms provided electronically. The forms allow you to get as detailed as you'd like while submitting a report to best give the Brockton PD the opportunity to respond to your issue. You can also get My PD without downloading the app at mypolicedepartment.org slash Brockton dash police dash department and fill out the information online just as you would the app on your phone. There's also Nextdoor an app and website at nextdoor.com that is a private social network for you, your neighbors, and your community. It's an easy way for you and your neighbors to communicate. You can use this to talk to neighbors about anything community related, tracking down a trustworthy babysitter, asking for help looking for a lost pet, and finding a reputable mechanic to work in your car. Quickly report a neighborhood break-in, organize a neighborhood watch group, do it all with the Nextdoor app. And last but not least, see Click Fix. This is a feature that gained popularity following our most recent winter as a way for residents to report potholes on city streets that needed to be filled. However, it's much more than a resource to report potholes. 
You can download the C-Click Fix app on your phone or go to the City of Brockton's official website at brockton.ma.us and click the C-Click Fix button on the left-hand side of the page. You can report non-emergency issues to the City of Brockton using this app. Everything from abandoned property to traffic signal issues to graffiti to loose animals to snow removal. You'll receive an email updating you on the status. These are just some of the new ways the City of Brockton is introducing technology to connect with its residents and make solving problems easier. And remember, the City of Brockton is online 24-7 at its official website, brockton.ma.us. In Brockton, we swing for the fences so we can touch home. We coach in Brockton to instill the teamwork that builds a great winning tradition. We do business in Brockton because here you can find a taste of home away from home. We keep our company in Brockton because we love this city. I study and learn in Brockton to achieve my goals. When Brockton is home, everything is within reach. We're the largest privately held office supplier in the country right now and it's coming out of Brockton, Massachusetts. Kenworth has had a good experience in Brockton. The big selling point for Kenworth going to Brockton was easy highway access and a city that would be easy to work with to get a nicely renovated facility up and running quickly. This is home. We love where we're at right now. And why would anybody not want to come to Brockton and go out there and try to shoot for the same kind of dreams with their company? Business investments are helping to build a new Brockton.